Today's tutorial is our current most commonly requested one. We're gonna be editing photos in a free mobile app called Snapseed. We'll edit a mobile photo and a DSLR JPEG so you can learn how to edit no matter what you're shooting with. Let's get started. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Today I made the most gourmet grilled cheese in my life thanks to a cooking class I took on Skillshare. I learned a hot tip that using mayo instead of butter makes for the best crust, and they use four different kinds of cheeses for the maximum flavor and stretch. I also added caramelized onions in between the cheese because I'm fancy like that. We then took some photos of it to add to our stock photography portfolio. You can learn how to cook, style, and photograph food, edit your photos, how to market yourself as a creative, and so much more thanks to Skillshare's library of over 17,000 classes. Right now, the first 500 people to sign up using our link will get their first two months for absolutely free. Just click the link in the description to start learning today. So you can download Snapseed for free for your phone or tablet. In this video, we'll be editing on an iPad, but it doesn't matter what device you use. The first photo is just a shot I took at a Wonder Years show last week on my iPhone 7. It's just a regular JPEG file, but we can still do a fair amount of editing to it. The first thing we'll do is click Tools. Snapseed has a ton of tools and effects, but don't get overwhelmed by all the options. Let's start by tuning the image, which is equivalent to the basic tab in Lightroom. To adjust each parameter, I'm just going to slide my finger to the left or right along the top of the screen. By default, brightness is the first parameter to adjust, so I'll go ahead and brighten up the image. To access the other parameters, just click Adjust. I'll choose Contrast next and lower that to negative 45. I'll click Adjust again and choose Ambience. I'm going to raise this to 24. I'll then lower Highlights, followed by the Shadows. I'll also warm it up just a tad to bring out the yellow a little more. Once finished, I'll click the check mark on the bottom right. Now I'll make some curves adjustments. You can choose from their curve presets or you can make your own. I'm actually going to use the soft contrast preset. You can also adjust the curves for the red, green, and blue channels if you want. Consider pulling the curve back on an individual channel or bringing it up to affect the colors in your image. I'm just going to leave these curves linear, however. I'll then hit the check mark to apply the curve. Next, I want to remove some distracting elements from the ceiling, so I'll choose the brush tool. I'll choose the exposure option and then lower it to negative one. I'll start painting with the brush across the entire ceiling. I'll turn the mask on so you can see what I'm doing. There's still a couple of spots showing and since I can't drop the exposure anymore, I'll go ahead and tap the check mark to apply this brush and do it again one more time to remove it completely. Next, I'm gonna use the heal tool to remove the exit signs from the stage because they're a bit distracting as well. Next, I'll use the detail tool. Structure will add some detail and clarity to the image. You can crank it up to 100 to see it in full effect. In this case, I'll put it to around 40. I'll then tap adjust and choose sharpening. I'll raise it to 15 and then apply it. Now these detail adjustments start to break apart the JPEG by the lights. So I'm going to mask the adjustments so they mostly affect the crowd. To do this, click the layer stack icon and choose view edits. I'll tap details and then click the brush icon. The number here shows us the mask opacity. I'm going to simulate a graduated filter by painting on at 100% opacity at the bottom, and as I get closer to the lights, I'm going to start to fade the mask out. Once I'm happy with it, I'll hit the check mark to apply it. You can see that adding the mask really helps to limit the detail adjustments to the areas where it looks best. Next, I'm actually gonna go back into the Tune Image tool and add even more ambience. Once again, I'll mask this adjustment to only affect the crowd. Finally, you can crop the image using the crop tool. If you want to post a vertical to Instagram, we recommend the 5 to 4 ratio. It's actually a 4 by 5, but these ratios are written for horizontal images. Then I'll go ahead and export a copy of the image. If you think you may want to make adjustments to your edit later, just choose Save a Copy and you'll be able to open it back up in Snapseed and make further adjustments. Next, we have a photo taken on our Canon 5D Mark IV that we exported from Lightroom as a JPEG without editing it. Once again, we'll start with tuning the image. I'm going to brighten the photo a little, then lower the contrast to around negative 20. I'm 
I'm also going to lower the saturation a little. For ambience, I like to crank it up to 100 to see how it's affecting the photo and then bring it back down to where it looks good without being over the top. I'm then going to lower the highlights to retain a little more detail in her jacket and lower the shadows a bit as well. I'm going to add just a touch of warmth to the image too. Next, I'll make some adjustments to the tone curve. I'll start by raising the black point a little. I'll then add another point in the shadows and pull that down to bring some contrast back into the image. I'll add another point in the middle and bring that up to the center. I'll add another point up here and then bring the white point down. I'll then lower the next point a little to make the curve more gradual. I'll also fine tune the shadows. Next, I'm going to use the brush tool to dodge the window around the model and bring back some of the reflections. I'm going to lower the dodge amount by five and then brush away. If you need to erase any part of your brush, just hit the decrease arrow until it says eraser and paint away anything you don't want affected by the brush. Next, we'll add some tonal contrast. It automatically sets the values to the high, mid, and low tones. I'm going to start by lowering the mid tone amount. The protect highlights adjustment is pretty subtle with this photo, but it mutes the highlights on her jacket, which looks pretty good. The protect shadows adjustment will bring more detail into the shadows, so we'll bring that up to around 20. Next, I'm going to click on the portrait tool. There's a bunch of presets built into Snapseed, and in this case, I'm going to select combo one. I'll click the skin tone option, and we can select a skin tone that works well for our model. In this case, I'll select Fair. Then, I'll go back to Adjust and lower Face Spotlight Adjustment down to 2. I don't want to go overboard with any of these adjustments, so Skin Smoothing I'll put to 16. For Eye Clarity, I'll just lower that to 18. Then, I'll use the Detail tool and add a little structure, followed by a little sharpening. Then I'm going to mask this adjustment so the structure and sharpening will only affect our subject. I'll click Invert, which adds a mask to the entire image. Then I'll just paint away the parts I don't want included with the mask. Finally, I'll just do another 4x5 crop and export it to my camera roll. Thanks for watching. We hope these tips were helpful and don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. The one that makes us laugh the most will pin. Bye.